Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for your patience. I know it takes quite a while to get everyone in. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to Jan Leeming, who's going to talk you through her single travel experiences through Tuscany and Burma, most recently Burma, and India. So over to you, Jan. Thank you, Matt. Well, <laughs> thank you. And thank you very much for your patience. And I'm sorry you had to queue for so long, but in fact, the people before me were the sponsors of the show, so we couldn't kick them out. <laughs> and I'm also sorry that you've had to wait, but elf and safety denotes that we can only have so many standing. So we're actually turning people away. That's lovely. When I, my days in theatre, it was full house. Great. Thank you very much for coming. Well, I think this is called um, Single Traveller Specialist. Well, I haven't visited the world. I have visited quite a few parts of it. And in fact, had I known about Just You earlier, I'd certainly have seen more of the world. But I've been single for 13 years, and I'm not somebody um, I'm not a wimp, but I don't want to go on holiday on my own. Whereas with Just You Singles, you go on holiday with like-minded people. It's not a dating site, I stress that. And very often there are people there who are married, but let's say the husband wants to go on a golfing holiday or a fishing holiday, and the wife wants to go somewhere else. Anyway, I am going to talk about Burma, which I've recently returned from. India, where I filmed for The Real Marigold Hotel, and Tuscany, which I also visited with Just You. Burma was called Burma and the Road to Mandalay. Burma, of course, is now Myanmar, and it's only recently been opened up to tourism, five years. I don't know whether it'll change, but it really was absolutely wonderful. We travelled with Malaysia Airlines, and I don't know what it is about Eastern Airlines, but they do go that extra mile to give you service, and they were absolutely delightful. We landed, uh, literally hit the ground running in Yangon, which was called Rangoon, and is one of the many, many, many ancient capitals of Burma. I'll come back to the Shwedagon Pagoda a little later. That is a Burmese absolute landmark. It's world heritage, and it is pretty amazing. We arrived at 2 o'clock. We had our womb, rooms, <laughs> rooms apportioned to us, and we were off. First of all, we went to see the largest reclining Buddha in the whole of Burma, now, forgive me for my Burmese uh, pronunciation. I'm usually quite good, but not with Burmese. You can't even read it. It's like a load of circles. It's the Chukchukhi Pagoda, and it's 70 meters long. And look how I'm dwarfed in that picture. It's pretty much the wow factor. Uh, we went to a few other places, and then on our way to dinner, we passed a replica of the royal barge. Um, the royal barge, I mean... Uh, Everywhere in Burma, you see gold, gold, gold. And, of course, when royalty was um, on the throne, before the military junta, uh, everywhere you saw the gold and barges like this. It was very beautiful. The next morning, we were off early to go to uh, Bagan. And, uh, sorry, Mandalay. And there, I mean, we saw loads and loads of, of Buddhas, but this one is particularly famous. It's the Mahamuni Buddha, now, Catholics and high church Anglicans light candles for intercessions. In Burma, they buy these two-inch paper-thin squares of gold, and they put them onto the Buddha, and eventually it's smoothed down. I'll show you a picture of what that Buddha looked like 100 years ago. It actually had features. There's so much gold on it that the features have totally gone. We were taken to a gold works, and they work in half-hour shifts because it's heavy work. They've got these sheaves and sheaves and sheaves of gold interwoven into bamboo leaves, and they bash them until they become fine. And then we went into the shop next door and saw all these things covered in gold. I mean, it was just amazing. I mentioned the fact that they buy the, the little offerings and... This was at the Shwedagon Pagoda. You see that rather inappropriate little bucket down by the side? Well, that's some sort of adhesive, so they put their square of gold, and eventually somebody comes along and smooths it down, and you end up with a Buddha like you see on the left. Um, we went for um, a trishaw ride in Mandalay, 
Um, thank goodness we were in the back streets because the highways were pretty, ooh, and we had to cross them a couple of times. We were taken to various workshops. This one, and Elf and Safety, eat your art out, because honestly, the machines were just there. There were holes in the floor. But what they were producing were these lengths of cloth called longies. Um, they're ubiquitous in Burma. They're worn by the men, by the women. You try and tie one, it looks easy, but it isn't, because we all bought them, and just like me with saris, we fell apart. Beautiful, beautiful colors. I kept seeing people with these yellow blodges on their, their cheeks and on their foreheads. It is tanaka paste. It is meant to be good for the complexion and also to prevent against sunburn. Uh, of course, I don't look quite as good as the lovely little lady who had the lotus leaves because my skin is not dark. And I don't think the little baby was too happy, but maybe, maybe he was being um, protected from the sun. Ah, this was absolutely beautiful. It's the longest wooden bridge in the world. It's teak. It's across the Tuang Mafen Lake. The lake is quite shallow. That bridge is 1.2 kilometers. And we were taken there for a sunset uh, ride on a boat. Unfortunately, every sunset we were taken to see was bedeviled with clouds. However, it did make for beautiful photography. Um, we were on the lake, we had cocktails, and all of a sudden I noticed that our boat rower was signalling to the others and we headed for the shore because the clouds were gathering and it was beginning to rain. But it was absolutely beautiful and we did walk part of the way on the bridge. More Buddhas. We left early the next morning for a five-hour coach drive to Bagan, another ancient capital. This snake temple is the Palyaiki snake temple, and the Buddha is, well, I was going to say guarded, but I don't think the pythons do very much. They're asleep most of the time. But they are washed every morning at 11 o'clock, and that's as close as I want to get to pythons. Uh, when we got to Bagan, we had a horse and cart ride around old Bagan, where there are over 4,000 temples and stupa. These are just a few of them. Everywhere you go, you see the gold. You wonder where it all comes from. Actually, I preferred it where the jungle was reclaiming its own. That, I thought, was lovely. It had an element of peace about it. Very, very beautiful. More Buddhas, big ones. What's that old song? Big ones, small ones, some bigger, whatever, whatever. And in that temple, there were 24 and on the opposite wall were all the plaques of all the people who donated, either asking for an intercession or just donating for the upkeep of the temple. And if you can see down the bottom of the big Buddha, that will give you some idea of the size. And there's just a sort of wooden shed around it. I think in the old days it would have been out in the open, but now with all the gold, etc. And mm, people are maybe not quite as honest as they used to be, so it is enclosed. We went to a village in the mountains called Kalo. Now, I tell you what, when you go on a just you experience, it's not a holiday, it is a voyage of discovery. You see so much. And on that particular um, trip, we got up at four o'clock in the morning, I think five times, but it was worth it. You, you don't really feel tired because you're seeing so much. We did actually have a couple of hours off. And our tour guide said, um, there's another temple I thought, oh, another temple? Uh, but he said, it's carved into the rock, and there are hundreds of Buddhas. I'm glad I went. So the cave is dripping wet, and every temple you enter, you must take your shoes off. We had extremely clean feet. Uh, and outside, well, you can see how small I am, a sandwich between the Buddha and a Buddhist monk. Well... This was something that none of the other tours did. We were taken for lunch in a Buddhist convent. But when you go, you take a gift. Usually it's fruit or flowers or a cake or bread. And we were taken to a market to buy our offerings. And I'd bought some rice and some fruit. And then I saw these rather attractive leaves. So 
I sign language, because of course I don't speak Burmese, said I would like some. And the lady got a plastic bag, she put the leaves in, and then she put a bottle in, and then she put something else in, and, the, and, I, and then she gave it to me. No money. It was a gift. And when I got back to the coach, we not only had an English tour guide, we had a, 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 a Burmese tour guide who was great fun, especially after lunch and a few tiger beers. And uh, he laughed. And he said, that's all the paraphernalia to make a betel chew. That's the betel nut which they chew and makes their teeth go black. The, I don't think the younger generation do it to the extent that the older generation did, because for some reason, black teeth are beautiful. Oh, well, takes all sorts. And that's one of the many markets we visited. The nuns. Well, we had a lovely lunch. I'm nearly vegetarian, so eating vegetables highly spiced is, is very good for me and for my stomach. And the lunch was absolutely delicious. They did throw in a little bit of chicken. I think that was for people who are meat eaters. And afterwards, we were allowed to go into their temple, and we were allowed to ask them questions, and it was almost no holds barred. And that lovely nun has a degree in psychology, and her English was virtually perfect. And, do you know, they were all so happy and serene. We all came away after lunch, and for the rest of that day, we were imbued with this sense of serenity. And we were all nice to each other. Actually, we were all the time. Calor, um, our guide wasn't sure, but he thought this was probably a one-off. This temple wasn't clothed in gold. It was mirrored glass. Unfortunately, it was a cloudy day. I would love to have seen that temple in sunshine. I should think you'd have needed sunglasses. And there you can see some Burmese writing. See what I mean? You haven't got a hope in hell of being able to read it. Um, I've mentioned you take gifts, and of course they take gifts of flowers and food and cakes and everything to the Buddhas. Well, I took this photo because I liked the cat. And I think he was helping himself to cake. And he was there for a good 10 minutes. He had a, a good, good feed. Uh, when we were doing our cart trip around um, Bagan, old Bagan, I just thought that was beautiful. You still see these scenes, and probably will for quite a long time. They're not monks. They're um, boys. I'm not sure about the girls, but the boys go into these monasteries when they're five, when they're 13, and when they're 18, and they go in for a few months. I suppose it's a bit like a retreat. And our wicked Burmese guide said, oh, I still go in for months, he said, to get away from the wife. <laughs> and there, of course, like the adult monks, they don't beg. They just take their bowls, and the villagers come out and give them food. It's usually in the villages, it's rice, um, because that's their predominant diet. We went to the Sulamani temple, which is the only one, as far as we were told, where you can actually, there are steps, and you can go up it. Well, I'm getting to the stage where I don't think much longer I'll be able to do 290 steps up the Leaning Tower of Pisa or 320 up the Duomo in Florence. I was determined to get to the top. It was getting dark, it was cloudy, and I didn't think about getting to the top, but I got there. Well, the steps, I think you can just about make out, were very deep and very narrow. And when I got to the top, I suffered from vertigo. How the hell was I going to get down? However, our Burmese guide said, wait till everybody else goes down and come down at your own pace. And I came down backwards as you do in a submarine. Um, when we got up there, it was cloudy, but it was still worth getting up there. Um, it was a lovely view. We had lunch on a sandbank in the Irrawaddy River that's now called the Ayarawadi, and I couldn't resist that. That's our Burmese guide, Nini. And we're doing Titanic. We didn't sink. We got to the sandbank, and when we arrived, there was nothing there, absolutely nothing. And within an hour, when we were plied with rum punches, very weak ones, very weak ones, because we had to get back on the boat to come back, um, the entertainment arrived, the chefs arrived. Within an hour, we had a hot meal. We were sitting at tables having a hot meal. It was just amazing. And it was absolutely beautiful because around us in the hillsides, the lights were coming up on the temples. It was magic. It was really lovely. 
And here, this was a monastery. We didn't meet the monks, but the villagers made a meal for us. And if you couldn't manage to sit on the floor, they did provide chairs. At Calor, we were going to go on a train ride through the mountains to the Inle Lake, which is one of two lakes, big lakes, in the mountains. Well, the train was going to be four hours late, but we had to get to the Inle Lake in time to get our boats because we were going to be on the lake for an hour. Of course, you can't do that in the dark. So our tour guide, who took the strain over everything, although it's so well worked out, there wasn't much strain really, he, arrived, he arranged for a coach. So we had a coach ride, and we got there just in time, four or five to a boat. Now, I was never able to get the wake properly, but you couldn't see for the speed. The lake is massive. It's also tidal. And we were on there for an hour. We arrived at our hotel in darkness. And mentioning hotels, I have to say they were all of an extremely high standard. The one in Yangon was five-star. Well, five-star is five-star everywhere in the world. But the other hotels we stayed in were delightful. Service was a bit slow, but they were all beautiful. The water was hot. The beds were comfortable. What more do you want? The next morning, we woke up, and we were going to spend 24 hours on the... Well, virtually 24, all day on the lake. Because it's tidal, obviously, the villages around the lake have to be built on stilts. And every village is devoted to some art or craft or, or some occupation. That one we passed, and I think that must be the dyeing of cloth for the Buddhist monk's um, apparel. This was um, a village devoted to pottery. Now, over my life in television, I've interviewed, oh, dozens, if not hundreds of craftspeople um, and potters as as famous as the now late Bernard Leach, and just ordinary potters. What amazed me about this woman was how quickly she threw that pot, and she was moving the wheel with her foot. The kiln was just a hole in the ground, and all the villagers bring their pots, and when the hole is full, they put a load of um, material in and light it. Uh, it's very primitive, but my goodness, the end result's very good. Well, who could resist the children? Oh, they were just gorgeous. I wanted to wrap them up and bring them home. This was another pagoda on the lake, and you can see the stupas. Now, predominantly, a stupa is solid, with just niches on the outside for the Buddhas. And uh, if you have the money, I suppose, you, you pay for a stupa, and you then bring your gifts to the Buddhas. The pagodas and temples are where you go inside to, to pray. Uh, on the Inlay Lake, it's famous for these fishermen who, while they're fishing, row the boat with one foot round the oar. Uh, this chap was our boatman. He wasn't a fisherman, but he was showing us how they did it. And that beautiful flower, the Lake Hyacinth, is beautiful and deadly. It's choking the Nile, it's choking the Amazon, and it's choking the Inlay Lake. The roots go down so deeply, and it spreads like wildfire. I just love that picture. We were having lunch in one of the villages on the side of the lake, and I just turned around, and there, there was this. I mean, it takes you back centuries almost. Oh, we had to get up early to get back to Heiho Airport, and our guide naturally left lots of time because of all the traffic that there wasn't, and we got back to the airport. It wasn't even open. And these guys were coming around, and for $2, they gave you a massage. Well, I've never had a massage in the open, sitting on a bench. And actually, the plane was two and a half hours late. We got back to Yangon, booked into the five-star hotel again, and we were off. And um, the highlight of that tour was the Schwedagon Pagoda. It really is stunning. It was built, well, it's rumored to have been built 2,600 years ago. It's clad in some 50 tons of gold. I can't, I couldn't get a picture to show you the size. It's massive. And at the top, the umbrella, now if I remember, it's got something like 5,360 5, uh, special stones, rubies, emeralds, diamonds, and at the very top is a 75-carat diamond. What a waste. <laughs> Mind you, whose, hand, whose woman's hand is big enough to take a 75-carat diamond? Not even Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, now, there was a bolt-on four days at a beach. Um, I didn't do that, but 
Sarah, with whom I made friends, did. Naughty girl. She sent me this one and said, Sunset at last at the Swung Beach. So that is a very quick trip round Burma because I've also got to take you to India and Tuscany. But it really was an amazing experience and I felt I'd got a flavour of Burma. Five years into tourism, no beggars, but the hustlers, um, they'll follow you from temple, temple to temple. And somebody said, Jan, you've got mug written there. Because I would say, oh, I, I, thank you, but no, it's too heavy. I can't put it in my luggage. I might have been saying, yang chow mang chow. And I ended up buying things. Just, just, it wasn't the cost. I mean, everything was so inexpensive. I mean, even the meals out, many of the meals were included in the trip. But one evening, I had a nasi goreng, which is of Dutch East India origin. That was $7, and my drink was $7. I mean, it was just amazing. And you can buy some beautiful things very inexpensively. India, well, that, of course, I visited uh, when we made the Real Marigold Hotel India series. But Just You does three tours to India. They do an eight-day tour around the Golden Triangle, which is where we were, Jaipur, Delhi, Agra. They do Spirit of India, which is 13 days. And you know, I met somebody on the stall today who did that and actually saw a tiger at Rathambur. They don't guarantee the tigers, but she said they did see one. Uh, Kerala is southern India, a taste of Kerala, and that's 12-day tour. Kerala is where I'd like to go because my father was born in southern India in the Nilgiri Hills. Well, I couldn't start a talk on India, could I, without the Taj Mahal? I'll come back to that. Jaipur. That's where we stayed, in a haveli. I'm glad we stayed in the old city because um, the Haveli was really lovely and the family who owned it were just so welcoming. The Pink City, I'd call it Terracotta, but they call it the Pink City, founded by Jai Singh in 1726 and decorated in 1876 in this colour to welcome the Prince of Wales, who became Edward VII. Why they decorated it for him, I don't know. Look at the height of the gates, and that's to accommodate the elephants. Old, there's new Jaipur, which has department stores and high-rise buildings and dual carriageways. Once you go through those gates, you're into old Jaipur, and you see beautiful architecture like that, the Palace of the Winds, it's not a palace, it's a facade onto the main street so that the women from the Zanana could come, without being seen, of course, and then watch the parades. And on the, you see these wonderful spice stalls by the side of the road, everything and anything. But you also see that. And the cows, the goats, the pigs scrabble amongst it. One thing I have to say, though, there was no smell. I really expected it to stink, and it didn't. Don't ask me why. Sushma, our beautiful hostess, I noticed she boiled her milk every day. And that's probably because you don't know what the cows have been grazing on, but the milk was very nice. That's the Amber Fort. It's one of, um, well, it is the main uh, highlight of Jaipur. It's called a fort, but it's also a palace. And it is pretty stunning. If you look in the background, you see all that beautiful decoration. Well, the Maharajas were extremely rich, and they went on tours, and they fell in love with the frescoes in Italy, and they were rich enough to bring back Italian fresco painters to decorate their palaces. And the amazing thing is, I mean, that was 16th century, and most of this has not been retouched for 400 years. There, look at that. I had to take that picture. I think they were just visitors. Um, I mean, they looked Chinese to me, Japanese. But look at the beautiful decoration behind them. In the uh, Amber Fort, there's a hall of mirrors. And we were told that you light a candle, you know, to get a thousand lights. Unfortunately, you can no longer go inside it because tourists were helping themselves to the bits of glass. I wish I could have gone inside, that was the nearest I could get, but it was very beautiful, and I could imagine a single candle lighting a thousand lights. Now this, you didn't see in the India series. We spent two days travelling to Karoli. There's an old palace going back to the 13th century, and the 16th century frescoes 
I couldn't believe. Look at the colour. I mean, just look at it. And they're, they're trying to renovate it and the Durbar Hall uh, in order to be able to take tourists around it. But we had a, a sort of first glimpse. And you might just come across a snake charmer. And, of course, in India, to the Hindus, the cow is sacred. And everything gives way to the cow. And even on a dual carriageway, if the cows are crossing, you stop. And if the cow is deformed in any way, it is even more sacred. And the crew made me kiss that. Uh, it's supposed to bring you luck. I'm still waiting. <laughs> the Taj Mahal. So beautiful. And such a wonderful testament to love. Shah Jahan built that as a tribute to his favourite wife, Mumtaz. It's white marble. It's absolutely stunning. And I did wonder, because often you see these things, like Michelangelo's David, and you think, yes, but would it really live up to expectations? Well... The pathway up there is through all these souvenir stores, a grotty alleyway, and you think, oh, you go through the gate, and it's there, and it takes your breath away. The sad thing was he was going to have, built on the opposite bank, a, a similar um, monument to himself in black marble, but he was overthrown by his son, and for the remaining years of his life, he was kept in, imprisoned, and all he could see from his prison windows were the tops of that beautiful monument. I don't know why that parasol was given to me as a joke for my birthday uh, two years ago, and I, I just took it. Well, it was the star of the show. I mean, that is the Princess Diana bench. I mean, you can't go to the Taj Mahal and not have it. You're cute to have your picture taken there. But men, women, boys, girls were coming up and either asking to borrow my parasol or please could they have a picture with it. Well, it made them happy. Um, I had hoped to go to a Hindu wedding, but September 2015, when we were filming, is not an auspicious month, month for weddings. November is. But the Ganesh Festival, the Hindu elephant god, that's the time. And our crew had paid for the privilege. This is the temple. We'd taken our offerings, and then we joined the parade. They had paid to be able to um, film it, and we were ahead of the elephants. There were 11 elephants four horses, no, six horses and six camels. And when the, we filmed the, the, the elephants, up came the horses and the horse guard indicated for me to get on. I don't ride, but they were going very sedately and I thought, I'm not missing this. I got on horseback and I don't know what the waiting crowds thought I was, but they were holding up their babies and holding up their arms. <laughs> Uh, you know, as if I was somebody special. And all I was saying was Jai Ganesh, which is Hail Ganesh. It was a wonderful experience. I'll never forget it. And, of course, the ubiquitous marigolds around my neck. That's where the film got its title. We were taken to Varanasi. It's the most holy city in India. Um, I think it's the oldest. It was called Banaras during the British occupation. And um, I'm, I gather it is a city with some wonderful architecture. We didn't have time to see that, but we did go to some ceremonies, some of which I'd rather forget. And this was the Brahmin ceremony in the evening. I can't tell you much about it because it's obviously all in Hindi, I think, but it was rather spectacular. And afterwards, we were invited, well, in... in in England, you'd light a candle. In Burma, you'd buy your gold. And here, you bought your little tribute, the marigolds around the candle, and you floated it on the Ganges uh, and thought of your departed loved ones. And at that stage, I'd just lost my mother, my father, and somebody very special. But I wanted to wrap him up and bring him home. He was absolutely lovely. I put this in because... Indian hospitality is amazing. Um, Princess Sangeeta, who was the landlady to the lovely Emma Tom Tom uh, Chapman, if you watch the series, the jeweller, and uh, it was the only time I actually was able to conduct an interview because usually we were interviewed with a camera over the shoulder. And when I finished, I looked at the cameraman and he said, no, you've got it all. And I said, oh, 
Do you know, we haven't had time to go shopping and I so wanted to buy a sari. I think I've got a little bit of Indian blood in me. And Sangeeta left the room, came back and presented me with that. Sushma, our hostess at the Haveli, showed me how to put it on. I videoed it. Well, I come out looking like a sack. Otherwise, I'd be wearing it for you today. And I had to take a picture. This is one of the tuk-tuks. No girlfriend, no tension. <laughs> Highlights of Tuscany. When I joined Just You as their ambassador, that was the first um, trip they sent me on. I've seen the highlights before several times, but to go on this trip and have every... Well, you know the old, uh, let the train take the strain? Well, here you just let the guide take the strain, if there is any. And I have to say, Just You has a 24-hour duty officer, so wherever you are in the world, uh, if the tour manager can't sort it, there's the duty officer who will sort out illnesses, anything. Uh, it's very comforting to know that. So, in the Catholic religion, you are born with original sin, and it has to be washed away before you can enter the church. That's why the baptistry, which, where you're baptised, where your original sin is taken away, and then you go to the church. We went into the baptistry, and it was stunning, and the acoustics were out of this world. We knew that, uh, I think it was on the hour, they shut the door. We'd gone up high, and quite frankly, I thought it was the 16 singing a cappella. It was one guard. It was incredible. It must be fantastic to go there to a concert. San Gimignano is on a hillside, and in the old days, the rich showed their richness by building upwards because they couldn't build outwards. The Medicis took paid to that, and only a few of the towers are left. But it is pretty stunning. Now, that's the square, and you can see that once upon a time, all those houses would have gone up and up and up. But, of course, they had to take the towers off, so that's what you've got left. The square is absolutely lovely. They boast that it's the best ice cream in the world, but not being an ice cream eater, I can't really say. I just thought those against that incredible sky, it was, it was delightful. Siena, well, I'd been there before. That's the, um, the square uh, where they have the palio. It's a race that's been going on for centuries. And I'm glad to say, for once, elfin safety comes into its own because in the, the old days, I mean, that's cobbles. And they just put down, I don't know, rushes and sand. And many horses got killed. Uh, it doesn't happen anymore. I tell you what, though, unless you can afford a thousand euros to be seated around the outside, I wouldn't want to be in the middle, because I've seen pictures of that stuffed full of people. Eight hours? Well, I couldn't. I, I couldn't stand for eight hours. I really couldn't. It was, um, it was a great visit. Now, I had seen Siena Cathedral when I did an open university course in 1974. But as we came round the corner, none of the group had been there before, and there, there was this communal, oh, and it is pretty incredible, black and white marble. And if I can have a moment of indulgence, I love the sculptures of Donatello. When I first saw Siena Cathedral, tucked away in a dark corner was this, it's wood. Usually he worked in marble, but this is wood and it's Mary Magdalene. And the first time I saw it, it made me cry. It's now in the Duomo Museum in Florence. The Duomo. Um, our lovely guide, who actually lives in Italy, he's married to an Italian, and he knows, knows all the tips and wrinkles, and he said, before we do anything else, he said, it costs a euro to go to the loo. It costs a euro for an espresso. So I suggest you find a cafe pay your euro, and then use the loo. However, for an even better experience, we were standing opposite this department store. He said, when we finish the tour, come back here. Their cafe is on the roof. Well, we went back, we went up to the roof, and I'm afraid we indulged in a cake as well, and got this beautiful view, rooftop view of Florence. The Ponte Vecchio, so well known, and, I, I mean, now it's all jewellers, shops and gold. In the old days, those windows along the top, that was the corridor in which the Medici crossed from the left bank to the right bank. They didn't want to mix with the hoi polloi. 
nothing to do with us, but the day after we were there, the other bank collapsed. Nobody was hurt, thank goodness, but about 19 cars went into the Arno. Florence, and this is the leather market, and the very famous boar. Look at his nose. They say if you rub his nose and leave a little donation, you'll always come back. I've rubbed his nose each time, and I've been back three times. And those other little pictures down the bottom, beautiful, beautiful sculpture. I love him. He really is gorgeous. And you can't go to Florence without going to see Michelangelo's David again. I had seen the picture in the book and I thought, nah, can't live up to. However, when I did go to the Accademia, I didn't go this time, I have to admit, it wasn't time. I spend all my time in the Duomo Museum. But the first time I saw it, I spent 20 minutes walking round it and it was as if David followed me. You know, there are, well, the Mona Lisa's eyes are supposed to follow you. Well, David seemed to follow. Uh, it's an amazing sculpture. It's huge and very, very beautiful. Well, that's a quick, quick, quick trip around India, Burma, and, um, and highlights of Tuscany. And I can't speak highly enough. If you're single and you want to see, as I do, many places in the world, you're going with like-minded people, and they really do look after you. In Burma, we had all those different stops. We never saw our cases until they were delivered to our room. Any questions? Don't be shy. I can't have covered everything. <laughs> Surely. Huh? Yes. Single well, you don't pay a single supplement because Just You books 250,000 bedrooms around the world. So obviously they're big bookers and they get good deals. So you pay your money. You all get your double bed, your double bedroom, and there's no supplement. And in fact, occasionally, occasionally, married couples go and they have single bedrooms because one of them snores. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Um, I think the lady is saying um, when we were in India filming, it was for the real marigold to tell. That's where they took eight of us well-known people all over the age of 60 to see whether it was viable to retire to India. I think it kind of got lost along the way because it ended up being much more upmarket reality than documentary. But um, that's how it started out. So that was the real marigold to tell. But the second um, film, Marigold to Tell, I was very much hoping that, who's that lovely actor? I've forgotten his name with the, oh, he's just gorgeous, who was in the second Marigold film. No, he didn't arrive. No, no, Richard Gere. Yes, no, he didn't arrive. I thought they'd have kept him as a gift for the end, but no, he wasn't there. Any more questions? No, oh yes. Um, I will be perfectly honest, uh, we were told, and this is something you've got to be aware of, I thought that throughout India they really looked after their elephants because their transport, their, their livelihood, but apparently the elephants that take you up to the uh, Amber Fort are not that well treated. We did have an elephant ride, but that was outside of Jaipur, it's a kind of reserve, and as far as I know, they are looked after there. But if I were to go back, I would not take that elephant ride. That's being honest. Yes, there were some hands down the back. Yes? Oh, thank you. I mean, one, one thing that would concern me about traveling on my own is security. Did you feel secure all, all the time and in all the places? I felt totally secure because, of course, you're in a group. Yes, you're single, but you're in a group and you're being looked after. And frankly, it's more than just you is worth to take you any... I mean, put it this way. If you were on a trip and something were to happen, your guide would get you back to the airport I'm winging this, am I right? And he'd have you on a plane and get you home. 
I felt totally safe and totally looked after. Um, on the Burma trip, I think there were 22. There were people you identify with. Um, I spoke to everybody, but there were a few that I really got on with. In fact, we were the naughty people at the back of the coach and we were always having a laugh. And everybody thought, you know, what were we? But we were having a great time. And there were meals together. There were evenings when you could go off on your own. You could always go off if you wanted to. Um, but the one thing you have in common is it's a place you want to see. So that's what you're talking about. Security, I didn't think, no. Not at all. Not at all. And um, I would trust them implicitly. Yes? Thank you for saying what you did about the sari. I only wish I knew, because I bought a... It's not! I ended up like a sack. I'll come to you afterwards. Um, sorry, I was just wondering, um, how, how big are the sizes of the groups that you travel with? Um, well, the Tuscan Highlights, I think, was 19. Uh, Burma was about 22, and I think, Matt, I'm right, you never take more than 30, do you? That's right, average about 23. Average 23. So it's not a massive, massive group, um, which is nice. I mean, I like people, but remember, you've all got to be got onto a coach. And the other nice thing, we did have on both the tours a couple of people who were not that mobile, shall we say, and the tour manager was always there, making sure they weren't left behind. I can't speak highly enough. I really can't, because you are looked after. You know, they take the strain, not you. Yes, hello. You keep saying all this about being looked after. Uh, I went uh, last November to Borneo with, with Just Go. The, the holiday content, everything, was wonderful. The tour manager apparently wasn't the one that we should have had that one, couldn't come. The group seemed to have their own ideas about what they wanted to do. Um, I asked them what they were doing in the evening when there wasn't any meals and I was told... Did you them, say it was with just you? This was just you. Oh, my well, first I, time. I, my I, first I time. can't deal with complaints, I'm afraid. If you want to make a complaint, that's I'm not making a complaint. I, I wrote down this in the questionnaire, I am yeah. telling you my experiences. That I say the holiday content, but the people that I went with, I found were not at all friendly. There were several evenings when we didn't have the meals provided. I was in my hotel bedroom with a tank. Uh, well, I don't know how to answer that one. And I wasn't given special treatment. I wasn't given special treatment. Well, that's, I think, I think, Matt, um, very unusual and very unfortunate, and I, I'm very sad to hear it because, yes, I, I'm, you know, I was just with very nice people. All right, I didn't identify with all of them, whoever does, but I found my own level, and um, I went with two people that I particularly liked. I'm so sorry. I want to go again with just you. There's the layoffs in Cambodia. Yes. Well, I suggest you go to the Just You stand and have a word with, with Matt. But, I, I mean, I, perhaps I was just lucky. Um, and I can make my own sort of way. Um, I, I'm very, very sorry. Oh. Yes. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. I really am. And I wouldn't be standing here. Um, to thine own self be true. I would not have taken on the job as an ambassador if I hadn't thought or felt that Just You offers something very special. I wish I'd known about them years ago. I'm terribly sorry. There's a lady at the back and we're, uh, we're going to be doing what the other people did and overrunning. I'm so sorry. Just quickly, um, I'm about to do my 15th holiday with Just You. And I've certainly never encountered an experience oh. like the lady at the front has. Um, but actually, that's not, not my main point. Um, I'm about to do the Burma trip in 10 days' time. Oh, wow. What's the best bit of advice you could give me, please? The best advice, if you're... Uh, I think you heard that, didn't you? Yes. 
and thank you very much, and I'm still so sorry for you. The best advice is to read what Just You tells you, because on our Burma trip, there was one person, she hadn't read what they said, and she came out with pounds, and she was very upset that at the airport, because you can't get any Burmese currency beforehand, and we changed our dollars at the airport, and she couldn't change her pounds, and she was very annoyed. But they tell you what clothes, um, what, you know, mosquito, everything. Read the instructions, and you are going to have a wonderful time. What time of the year is it? It's January. Um, February. It's February. <laughs> I didn't know what time it was. You're going to have a fabulous time. And if you get Graham, give him my love. He was our tour guide. Okay. Thank you.